All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today I'm pretty excited, guys. Uh, I've been connecting and networking with people like crazy. And for our regular listeners, we've had on numerous doctors of all different backgrounds. Uh, recently this morning, we just aired Dr. Megan Cannon, the sports psychologist, our, one of our regular co-hosts from Mind of the Athlete. Uh, so today we bring on another doctor. And we're going to learn about actually really doctors in plural today uh, because their primary website is the doctors, plural, doctors, Wolfson, W-O-L-F-S-O-N dot com. And one of the taglines I love is awakening the world to wellness. And we're going to talk more about this because there's a book involved. There's a lot of content. They're all over social media. uh, But we're talking to the man himself right now, uh, Dr. Jack Wolfson. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Scott. Pleasure to be on with you. Uh, uh, beautiful day out here in Arizona, which I hope everybody uh, uh, has the same access to gorgeous weather and sunshine out in their neck of the woods. Uh, we have great weather here in Pennsylvania, so we've got a couple hours of time zone differences. Uh, but actually, kudos to Arizona because we briefly chatted before starting this call, and that's where my base was. I was serving out of Arizona on a re- that was considered Region 3 when I was a wildland firefighter. So. Yeah, uh, nine months out of the year, it's a, it's fantastic to be here. Summertime gets a little sweltering hot, and that's the goal pretty much of any Arizonan is to get out of Arizona. Uh, we actually we went camping this past weekend. We were up uh, north of Payson, up in the Muggy and Rim, uh, and if anyone who's listening to this can get out to that area. And one w- real quick thing, there's a place there called the Tonto Natural Bridge, and if you have a chance to Google that Tonto Natural Bridge and check that out, it was just spectacular, and the kids loved it. Well, I'm actually writing this down for the show notes because I'm glad you're bringing this up because that's the forest that I protected. Oh, well, thank you for protecting it because it was gorgeous. (laughs) Well, uh, and that bridge, admittedly, it took me two years to go visit it. Um, We were based, so since you drove that way, you drove. I'm guaranteeing it. You probably drove the Beeline Highway up to Payson. And when you get into Payson, if you make a right, uh, what is that highway? Is it 200 something? or Yeah, 260. You got it. 260. Take that east. For another hour through the Mogion Rim, I, I pronounce it. I pronounce it Mogion. Is that pronounced wrong? What did you say was Mogion? Uh, if you want to ask me about medical pronunciation, that I can do. <laughs> other, okay. other stuff, I'll leave it to you. I'll go with so that. So my squad boss has pronounced it the Mogion Rim or Mogi. So anyway, there's been a lot of wildfire up there over the years. There was even a massive uh, 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 history in the history of fire. Not to get off the topic, but there was a, a number, numerous people who had passed away many years ago on a fire up there too. So that was actually one of our areas that we had to study and understand to learn more about the crazy mother nature world of wild and fire in the West. Uh, but anyway, if you kept going that highway, there's eventually a turnoff that goes South down into a, into a Canyon through into a Valley. And that Valley is called Pleasant Valley, Arizona. And that's where I was based. Our base was uh, called at the time, Pleasant Valley hotshots in Pleasant Valley, Arizona. And we, that was our primary protection zone until we got released to be sent all over the West but now that, that crew's since been moved. They've now been renamed the Mesa Hotshots. So now they're uh, closer to civilization. Because where do you live in Arizona? Yeah, uh, we live in Scottsdale. So yeah. you know, Mesa's not too far from us. But uh, it's definitely special to be able to drive a couple hours to get up there to elevation. It's, it was nice. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing I loved about that. I mean, to your point, uh, you mentioned that nine-month thing. Well, <laughs> there's a few months of the year to our listeners, guys, where I didn't know this. When I moved out there, I, I had never lived in Arizona. So I moved out. Uh, see spring of 2010 bounced around I went south you know did some skydiving I hiked uh, Mount Lemon uh, obviously way south of Scottsdale and then I moved up there I'm like oh the weather's pretty nice here this is like April so uh, and then we go in we I had to go up into Pleasant Valley and we lived up there we had a compound up there and it was a couple of months till I finally had regular days off that we were actually allowed to be released far enough uh, so we weren't getting called back so I went back to visit my buddy in Scottsdale and I did not know you don't want to go there in the middle of summer because it was like 115, 110 degree heat. And I was like, dear God, this is, I don't know if I want to do this for my days off. But to your point, that's why I ended up loving the remote areas of Payson. And then even more valuable was going to Flagstaff. I love mm. Flagstaff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely so, good options. Pretty cool state to live in. So have you and your wife always had your business in Scottsdale? Uh, well, you know, the, um, uh, you know, my wife and I met in 2004, the end of 2004, and at the time I was a cardiologist working in a very large cardiology practice, doing angiograms, pacemakers, all that kind of fun stuff, and uh, I 
remained well and then i met my wife and she's a doctor of chiropractic doctor of causation opened up my eyes to the natural and holistic world so i started to change my practice and then finally uh at, in 2012 i left the big group the situation was right for me to leave and i opened up my own practice and together yeah as the doctors wolves and we practiced together here in paradise valley arizona and got the website and uh, i wrote the book and all that kind of fun stuff to go along with it well and this is something unique. By the way, are you standing right now? I'm standing. Yes, I'm in a standing desk. I am also desk. standing right now. All right. <laughs> this, is, this is my standing desk. So <laughs> yes. uh, something that I've learned from our, our mutual interest into more of that natural, healthier, uh, healthier lifestyle. I'm sure she probably was also an influencer on some of that. But that's one thing I've, I've really loved about once I reached out to you and really started following you on Twitter. And I was like, wait a minute. These guys have a traditional medical world, you know, couple blended with the natural world couple. And it's interesting because so many of our listeners are still stuck on one side versus the other. And it's very hard for, M I'll just go MD, but MDs to relate to DCs. And yeah. um, admittedly, one of my regular co well, co-hosts, he's been on a few times, the famous, famous Vinny Tortorich of Fitness Confidential. And he is not a supporter of DCs, man. He, he Casually, he throws it out there, but he's just like, man, he's like, you know, when I see a doctor in front of a doctor of chiropractic, I don't, I don't respect that at the same level because I'm sorry if you're on a plane and somebody's having a heart attack and they say, we need a doctor, what are you going to do? Crack a couple knuckles. And I was like, all right, I love you, Vinny. I know you have a great following, but uh -huh. uh, I, I understand that point. But I also- Yeah, I'd, lo I'd, lo <laughs> I'd love to take issue with that guy. That's for sure. Um, that's yeah. someone, with all due respect, to your guest really doesn't have an idea of how the, how the world works uh, health-wise. Um, not to come down too strongly and judgmental, but I love being judgmental. You know, listen, if you're on a plane and you're having a heart attack, what's a cardiologist going to do? Call 911. We can't do anything in a plane. Oh, chew on some aspirin. Big deal. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that a doctor of chiropractic actually, or a doctor of osteopathy can actually uh, move a, uh, a vertebra realign the cervical spine and actually improve autonomic tone. So sympathetics, parasympathetics, in the case of an acute myocardial infarction, you've got massive sympathetic overdrive and you've got blood vessels that are clamping down. Well, what if you restore parasympathetic activity to the, to the coronary artery and open up that artery and actually improve blood flow? Uh, I, I believe it can happen. I can't say there's a lot of science behind it or big studies that, mm -hmm. that show it, but, uh, you know, the, the doctor of chiropractic, the holistic doctor is uniquely qualified to be that primary care provider. In the case of an emergency, you go to a trauma center, right? You call an EMTA, e an EMT like you, Scott, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and let those guys and, and men and women come to the scene. But when it comes to prevention, the doctors of chiropractic are uniquely qualified uh, in that arena. Well, and, and that's where... I've had numerous chiropractors on this show because I support them. I've never had to go to them for that reason, mm -hmm. but I can speak to the fact that back in 2008, because I, I did the firefighting in 10 and 11, but back in 08, I did my first, like I was already a major cyclist. I'd been teaching spinning for six years, but I never really did any major endurance events as of yet. I had only, I, I started doing MS 150 rides on my road bikes, so 150 miles for MS every year. And then a friend of mine was doing a, uh, a marathon in memory of one of his college buddies who had passed away due to a medical mistake in the hospital and which killed him. Uh, it was a, something brain related, but I was like, wow, first of all, that's crazy. Second of all, I would love to go do that run with him. Uh, so in 2007, I went to DC and watched him run the Marine Corps marathon. And this is a 265 pound, six foot five rugby player. And I was like, who's also, by the way, a computer programmer. So just picture a very <laughs> How crazy is that? Uh, so <laughs> it must be one of those computers with like giant keys for those giant. He's got hands. literally, he's got those giant hands. Yeah. I bet. Uh, and, uh, so shout out to John Babb if you're listening to this, but uh, we love you, John. But he set such a great example to me. And I'm like, dude, I'm coming back. I can't stay on the sidelines. I was like, if you're going to do this next year in his memory, I'm coming back. I'm going to run this with you. Long story short, I didn't listen to him. I didn't listen to other people about transitioning from a cyclist to a runner background and didn't train properly. And then all of a sudden my IT band was getting all messed up and I was possibly not going to be able to do this marathon. And I went to my first ever chiropractor because someone said, listen, Scott, this is, you could have an alignment issue that's triggering the tissue issue. 
this guy has a masseuse on staff. They massage you first before they adjust you. And I'm like, okay, that sounds good. I could use a massage anyway. And then this guy got me ready. Like over the next three to four weeks, I was back at it. My training was, 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 was flowing. And then I've been hooked on that ever since. So no well, offense think, to the MD you know, world. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, but um, I mean, the, listen, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a DO. I'm, you know, so widely regarded as, as, as an MD, DO, whatever. Uh, we don't get trained in prevention. We, you know, we are t- trained in pills and procedures. That's just a fact. Uh, when it comes to nutrition, we get nothing. Lifestyle, the importance of sleep and sunshine, uh, you know, and, and relaxation. And even in physical activity, we just tell people, yeah, go on the treadmill for 45 minutes a day. That's healthy. Uh, the the doctors of chiropractic that I know they are uniquely trained in that uh, endeavor and uh, once again I think they're uniquely positioned to really really take over because you know they are going to speak to their patients about health and wellness it's not just about uh, fixing back pain neck pain there's so many of those doctors that are doing such great things so anywho no I mean that's why I'm so excited about this episode with you because it's always been hard for me to talk to the fact that And it's getting easier thanks to this show. I've had on a couple of ER doctors, a good friend of mine here locally who's an ER, and I got him to admit on a live episode. He had no problem admitting. He was like, yeah. He's like, guess what, guys? The average MD or the average medical doctor, we don't get taught anything about nutrition or that actual healthy lifestyle. We, we learn how things metabolize in the body. We get maybe an hour or two when we're in, in, in the university. And then unless you choose, I believe his words were, unless you choose to make that part of your CEU process, your continuing mm-hmm. education accredited, accredited process, um, it's, it's never going to be a priority. And like you just pointed out, unfortunately, a, somebody who got into healthcare to care for people then becomes the the drug pusher and the pill pusher because that's all they're being taught and learned over the next few years from sales reps and, and conferences they go to. I mean, I'm guessing you completely agree with everything I just said. <laughs> I agree with everything. I, you know, I left a group of 40 cardiologists and about 15 nurse practitioners and PAs. Uh, and I just, I mean, I saw it on a daily basis. I saw it on a daily basis for years and I'm, and I was the same person. So I'm not, you know, like throwing them all under the bus. I mean, it's just, it's just how we're trained. We're trained about pills. We're trained about procedures. We see a high volume. We see patients very quickly. If your blood pressure is high, here's a pill to lower it. Goodbye. There's no other conversation about why the blood pressure is elevated, why cholesterol and lipid profiles can be abnormal, why somebody has inflammation and heart failure and strokes. And that's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. But that's the beauty of being on podcasts like this and me getting my message out there to the world. That's why I wrote my Amazon best-selling book, The Paleo Cardiologist, was yes. to get information out there. And if you, you know, and if you're an ER doctor or you're a surgeon, or whatever you are and you take issue with you know dr. Jack Wolfson it well then you're also taking issue with the 300 MDs and PhDs that wrote the references at the end of my book that prove on what I say so uh, yeah I mean listen you know it's uh, you know the truth hurts and uh, and get over it because the world is going to pass you by the internet is the great equalizer podcasts etc the great equalizer where you can learn from uh, some brilliant minds about what it truly means to be healthy and how you can and achieve it well and so you, you you transitioned perfectly because i was going to bring this up next obviously i hinted at it in the intro you have a powerful book the paleo cardiologist which and again to our listeners guys this doesn't mean that we're just saying that everybody needs to be living the paleo i'm doing an air quotes because i have a paleolithic influenced lifestyle it's a matter of learning what that means at its root core And then even if in the beginning you're only experimenting with like 10% of it, like you start putting in some of those reps. I'm a fitness guy, so I got to talk to them. Like you got to start putting in some of the reps and saying, listen, you can't knock something until you try it. So in this case, we're talking about you taking a rep or a, a step forward and experiencing something of a healthy, natural lifestyle versus experimenting with a drug. Like, okay, wouldn't you rather take the natural step first and learn a little bit what how your body's gonna start responding to this possible healthiest step you've ever done before you knock it. Like everybody's like, oh, this whole paleo thing. I mean, how do you respond to that? Like the whole paleo thing. (laughs) Well, you know, the book is, the book is, uh, has some information about paleo nutrition, uh, but the majority of it is about living the paleo lifestyle, the wisdom of our ancestors in the 21st century. I mean, how do we apply those principles and try and do the best we can? And like you said, if you follow it 10% or 20%, it's better than where you came from. Uh, the more you follow it, the better your health is going to be. And you know, 
when it comes to nutrition, no matter what diet you follow, the thing I put in the book is that please do it organically. Uh, you know, avoid the pesticides, avoid the chemicals, and avoid the you know toxins and pollutants. So if you're eating ice cream, go get organic ice cream. If you're drinking coffee, go get organic coffee. On and on, uh, and the paleo lifestyle uh, is is going to be the answer because because by doing that you lower your risk of everything you know when you learn about the importance of sleep and the importance of sunshine which the medical community is so vilified for example you learn the importance of stress reduction you learn the importance of avoiding uh, pollutants and contaminants uh, the body heals you know and and the sad thing is that when you talk about pharmaceuticals like statin drugs and blood pressure drugs they can help lower numbers and quote unquote improve numbers but they do not have any significant benefit on outcomes so that's what we're talking about we're talking about you know who lives the best who who lives the longest who has the lowest risk of heart attack and stroke and those are the people that are living a healthy lifestyle. So in your book, I mean, it's a massive book. So there's a lot of good content and you just, you just hinted at, you've had 300. I, I know, I know officially we can't call them peer reviews. I'm going to bring it up on the screen here for our YouTube watchers and listeners as well. Uh, here's obviously the primary site, the drwolfsons.com. And then obviously here's the book, the paleo cardiologist, and here it is on Amazon. So the, the book here, your tagline on the book, The Natural Way to Heart Health. So, why, obviously, besides you being a cardiologist, but why did you target purely just cardiology and just heart health out of the paleo world? Is obviously, I know that's your medical background, but you could have gone so many different ways with this thanks to your wife's influence and what you guys do as a, as a power couple. <laughs> so... So, so I guess, Scott, this is you giving me my marketing tips, and I, I appreciated that, I, I, and I could have used it uh, certainly a couple of years ago when the book came out. Uh, you know, like anything, you know, you kind of kick around some titles, and you see where you want to go with it, but, uh, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, once again, it's about grasping that if you, if you help if you do the things to improve heart health you improve the things to for total body health so this is a way to prevent cancer this is a way to prevent brain-based diseases this is a way to prevent um, uh, osteoporosis or kidney stones or you know uh, improve testosterone whatever it may be that's what the book is about so you know I start off with talking about the importance of cholesterol what it does for the body the functionality in the body then I talk about advanced uh, lipid particles why the body makes them um, what are the good, the bad amongst those, and then how to improve things. And, uh, you know, there's chapters in there on heavy metals, there's chapters in there on sleep, and, and the importance of sunshine, and, you know, 20 most important tests that you need, and t uh, 20 supplements uh, that are, that are evidence-based. So we, we go in a lot of different directions with the book. But yeah, listen, I'm a car at the end of the day, I am a cardiologist, so it is pretty targeted for people for heart health information, but uh, you know, I do think the information is applicable to uh, a newborn baby all the way to someone who's 100 years of age. So it's interesting, you, you brought up something a real light touch here on supplements, right? And we talked a little bit about obviously the heart piece of it. So I'm a very big nutball about this, but that's why I'm a big paleo guy. And actually I'm gonna, I'll revert back to what we, we briefly talked about Vinny earlier, and I respect something that Vinny has helped, and you'll probably appreciate this. He trademarked the term NSNG. So he's a cancer survivor, uh, leukemia, uh, all thanks to a very famous well-known doctor out on the West Coast that helped him. And she basically, he's a huge cyclist. That's why he and I get along so well. But he's, he's basically, his tagline, Vinny Tortorich, is the celebrity you know, fitness trainer. So he's basically all the famous people hire him to get their, their act together out, out in L.A., um, but he came from good old Louisiana. Like, you know, he, he grew up on a farm and everything else. But, but he's actually studied at Tulane University. So he's studied amongst higher level educational programming that normally you wouldn't get as a professional trainer. I guess Tulane takes it to the next level and he required to study anatomy and a lot of other medical courses while he was there. Uh, but to his point, he ended up creating NSNG, which stands for no sugar, no grains. Uh, because he ties that back, not just to him battling cancer, but also heart health and things of that nature. Because let's, let's be real. Our government is still miseducating people on heart health, heart healthy grains and everything else. But they're also talking about, oh, well, you know, plaque and 
we're talking about sugar now and, and, and plaque and people, oh, eggs are evil for how, how many years and all this other stuff, right? So how, how, do, you, how do you respond to, I guess, some of, uh, how, do we, how do we bring that back into kind of a full circle from your perspective? What is your influence when in relation to trying to teach people about, you know, plaque and things of that nature and how it relates to the heart and how we're tying, tying in this influence, this negative influence of excessive sugar consumption, especially here in the USA. So we have a, a definitely a, a diet lifestyle that's been thrown off a lot over the years. Well, I think, you know, clearly everybody, no matter what the diet is or what the diet book is, uh, everybody is going to be anti-sugar. Unfortunately, sugar is the most addictive thing in the world, and uh, it's really, really difficult to get people off of sugar. But, uh, you know, we try, and, and listen, you know, whether it's uh, me, it's you, it's Vinny, all we can do is give people the information, and what they do with it is up to them. Uh, you know, I, but, uh, you know, so often they just don't hear the truth. They don't hear the truth from the medical doctor uh, or, you know, in the t you know, typical medical establishment. They don't spend the time uh, to speak to people. They're not educated to speak to people. They are, uh, you know, kind of down on the whole process in the sense that, uh, you know, they, they feel that no one's going to listen to them anyways. So even if they were to learn it, well, who's going to tell them, you know, who's going to stop eating sugar and grains? But uh, I certainly like that idea, you know, as well. Uh, you know, that I guess would be kind of similar to maybe some of the Weston A. Price, you know, foundation, uh, you know, principles, uh, no sugar, keeping grain unless it's a sprouted grain to a minimum. If you do dairy, do raw dairy. Uh, and I think, uh, I think for the most part, that's all, you know, agreeable and allowable. Uh, I don't have much of an issue with that. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, why the body forms plaque, I think it's actually pretty simple uh, to figure out. I think it all stems from a leaky gut. And when you have the things that damage the gut, you damage the intestinal lining, things get into the body that don't belong. And then the body has three finite responses to that leaky gut and to that onslaught from the environment. And that is going to be immune system activation, inflammation, and oxidative stress. And I talk about this in chapter 10 in my book. And now that's the body's response, inflammation, immune activation, and oxidative stress. And then collateral damage is just uh, the cells of the body, right? It's the endothelial cells that line blood vessels. And now you've got coronary artery disease. It's, uh, it's the uh, cells and tissues of the blood brain barrier. And now things get into the brain that don't belong. And now you've got all the neuroinflammatory disorders and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, MS. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you know. Listen, you know, people can race for the cure for MS all day long, but the but the the cause is well known, and the cause of MS is it's an autoimmune disease. You know, yep. and you know clearly it's improved from things like sunshine uh, and sleep, and you know making sure you don't have a leaky gut. Uh, and then you know once again, once the endothelial cells of the blood vessels are damaged. Now they start to collect uh, healing particles, and those are more inflammatory cells. Those are cholesterol uh, particles and LDLs. And when that healing is not complete, that's when a plaque ruptures, and that's when someone has a heart attack. Uh, and that's when they're on a plane ride, and you need to ask someone if they're a doctor on the plane who once again can do mm -hmm. nothing until you're in an emergency, in an emergency uh, room. You know, people, you, people are telling me when I show up, you know, mountain biking or whatever, they're like, Oh, it's a good thing. We got a cardiologist here. And I say, I can dial 911. I was going to say, uh, you with, only do so much with, with the best of them. Yeah. There's not much else I can do besides dial 911. Yeah. By the way, I'm a huge mountain biker. So kudos to that. <laughs> <laughs> you get out often by the way, weekly or uh, it, not often enough, but you know, we, we, I've got a 10 year old and a five year old and we're still really active with those dudes. We let, do a lot of hiking, but actually, uh, we got a friend out here in the desert and he runs tours with those really big fat tire, yep, uh, fat, mountain fat bike. bikes. Yeah. Oh man. And it's, uh, they just kind of roll over, you know, over the bumps and stuff like that uh, out there in the desert. It's fantastic. Oh yeah. Three of my good friends already picked them up. I was riding them in Colorado back in 2012 because my butt, I helped a buddy open, open up a shop outside of Denver in Littleton called Pedal. Uh, but he was one of the first shops to really start pushing the growth of those fat tire bikes because you have so much air in those tires that you really don't even need to pay extra to have those higher, higher end, uh, frames with the suspension systems and everything else. Cause admittedly my, my mountain bike out back, my brand new one last year, that's a race bike, full suspension. Uh, I don't have the fat tire on it, but fat bikes are super, super fun. So they're just, you're like you said, they kind of roll over everything and feels like you're riding on pillows. <laughs> well, out here you know, in certainly in Phoenix, I mean, there's just so many different trails, so many different areas. And uh, it's interesting because one of the areas we go to is up in North Scottsdale is called Brown Ranch Trailhead. Oh yeah. And you know, and, and what it is, you know, all day long, you see mountain bikers out there, but it's not a bunch of kids. It's a bunch of, you know, 50, 60 year olds that are out there and just pedaling away. 
And, uh, you know, it's just a great activity. And just being outside in the sunshine, I mean, one of the things that really bothers me, you know, and I'm originally from Chicago, and I could speak to the fact that I spent so much time inside the gym and on the treadmill and on the stationary bike. And like you said, you know, to get out there and ride 150 miles or to get out there in the desert and hike and bike and walk and do squats with your body weight and lunges and push-ups and pull-ups on, a, on an outside bar, I'm loving uh, this. you know, out there in the sunshine and the fresh air, that's what it's about. It's not about hopping on a treadmill for 45 minutes while you're watching CNN. I mean, it's just that that's not the pathway to health. I agree. I actually am anti-treadmill. I never, I could, I could, I, I had to use them in bad weather when I was training for the marathon. And then I got into some half marathons and stuff like that after that. And I was like, okay, but then I couldn't stand it. I was like, this felt so unnatural. Uh, plus they don't actually adapt your joints and that, that, that adaptation of impact. It's not the same. Like Washington DC, when I ran the Marine Corps marathon, that's all asphalt and concrete. Those are two of the hardest surfaces that you have to run on. So running on a spring loaded treadmill is not going to get you ready for that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So. No doubt. And that's, and I love trail running. I, I love to get on the trail and just do, you know, three, four, five miles, nothing dramatic. Uh, try and wear some, you know, really thin uh, shoes, thin sold shoes. So you can really get that impact. Uh, you know, obviously uh, I'm sure you read the book, uh, you know, born to run about the. Oh, runners, yes. Right? I mean, how is that just not magical to your health? The, Tar uh, the Tarahumara wow. Indians, I think I pronounced that correctly. Um, I still recommend that book to this day. I read that my first fire assignment in 2010. I bought that book and I was just camping. We, we camped under the stars every night. That's how yeah. we lived. We didn't, we, we lived outdoors with the fire. It was just, and it's funny, and I'll connect this back here in a second, but uh, anyway, that book led me into the love of Vibrams, the Vibram five finger shoes. Sure, sure. I still have a pair this day. I've always had a pair. And, and actually that's where in Arizona, I started using them and started building out one mile at a time. And then I started hiking in them too, until I can get used to really more of that minimalism. And that's something else for real quick for our listeners is that we're referring to minimalist shoes. It doesn't have to be Vibrams, for example, but be careful. Do not go out and think you're going to go run a half marathon with no experience. Like the, the whole point here of impact is you need to build up the structural integrity and the strength of your muscles and the tissues in your feet. It, it takes time to adapt to that. If you've been running on squishy, you know, mar highly marketable <laughs> shoes that really serve no, no benefit. So I, I, I speak out on minimalism on a regular basis because I'm a big nut of that. And I just feel that, and it's, there's been proof on this too. All these crazy soles and spongy honeycomb, whatever shoes, it's all marketing, dude. Like they're just coming out with new fancy look designs. There's actual no science behind that as yeah. far as the, the body. I don't know if you would agree with that or not. Uh, well, you know, I mean, for one thing, I'm, I'm standing uh, in my socks right now in my office. I don't wear shoes in the office. Uh, I sell duck fat in my office. I sell coconut oil in my office, all those things that are vilified. Mm. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally on board with all those things. And, uh, uh, yeah, I love it. I, and and it's just, uh, uh, it just works. It just works for my patients, you know, and, and going, you know, circling back to that leaky gut idea, you know, there's, you know, when I first learned about leaky gut in 2005, uh, from my wife and I kind of like laughed in her face. I'm like, we're, you know, I went to school for 10 years. I never heard about leaky gut once. And she said, well, that's your problem. Go read about it. So I started <laughs> to read about it. And I, uh, you know, it kind of, you know, I, I look for literature. There's really not much in the literature, but the concept made sense. Well, now over the last 10 years, the medical liter literature has exploded on the topic of leaky gut. And over the last couple of years, there's testing companies that can do it with a simple blood test. And uh, it's really, it's really exciting. It's really exciting. I, so I'm actually, I'm working on my PowerPoint presentation I've done for doctors and I'm going to, you know, record it and I'll put it up online as well. Uh, and then a link to, you know, the place on our website where we have where people can actually order the test kits and we just send them out the test kits and uh, they can do it in a local lab and uh, get the results. Very cool stuff. Now, is that going to be something that like anybody can do from anywhere? Because obviously you exist online. So, and I don't live in Arizona, um, but anymore, but is that something like literally if I could go and order that test kit that gets drop shipped to me and then I just have to find a local lab here that would support yes. that? Yeah. And then, uh, exactly. You call around and say, Hey, listen, I got a lab kit, you know, in here, whatever. And, uh, you know, the instructions are, are with it. The company is called Vibrant America and our, and our website, if you go to the shop page, you can uh, punch in wheat zoomer. 
and that gives you information about that particular kit. And then we're working on for our of, YouTube people. I'm going to do that literally right now. Yeah, so no, I'm on the shop page, and it, then, I mean, this is so important, so important. So uh, I'm searching the, search the store. Button, wheat. Just punch in wheat. Oh. Open the search box. Oh, yeah. Help. There you go. There we go. Wheat. Wheat. Good. And then, no, another another book reference since we said wheat. Uh, I've I, some of my first books I ever read was Dr. Perlmutter's Grain Brain, and Wheat and Wheat Belly. Just phenomenal books as well that I highly recommend. I actually have been. I just have no time right now, but I need to make time to build a, a, a library of reference into my site because we've talked about authors like you and just sure. great books that I want to make sure more people are knowing about. And that's something that I will say Vinny Tortorich does a great job on on his site. If you ever come on to his show, cause he has a huge following, uh, he is his, his, he, he, every, every book that he respects and appreciates, and I, he'll probably love yours too, goes on there. I know that there's a difference of opinion on the <laughs> Cairo thing. Uh, but then again, you're a cardiologist, so we can skip past that, and he'd probably accept it in right away. <laughs> well, so anyway. I, you know, um, whatever. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, listen. Obviously, I feel very strongly about chiropractic, and uh, and uh, maybe I was a little bit harsh and got off to the wrong foot. But, no, but uh, maybe you I, could I, help I think, influence him. Well, right? and maybe I have a whole chapter on chiropractic in my book. Now, the whole chapter is eight pages, but I I can uh, discuss it all day long on how chiropractic helps heart health. But here's the the leaky gut, and then uh, you know it just. Uh, you know, as we see here, basically what happens is you have, the, you know, all different environmental toxins that damage the intestinal lining, those tight junctions to open up, and then particles get into the body that don't belong. And then the body says, what are you? <laughs> and it attacks uh, those nasty particles. And then in the attacking process, it starts attacking uh, other parts of the body because, you know, the, the body doesn't go into attack mode as kind of like you'd think of like a sharpshooter. It goes in with a machine gun kind of blasting through everything to try and, you know, destroy foreign invaders. So, um, uh, it's really a fantastic, fantastic test. Now, one of the beauties of this is that not only does it look for a leaky gut, but then also tests for 50 different antibodies to wheat, uh, gluten, uh, and the non, uh, gluten components of wheat. So this is, I kind of jokingly say, this is like your certificate where you take this, if you're at a restaurant, you, you know, you're gluten-free and you're talking to someone, you know, the waiter or waitress, and they kind of roll their eyes. Oh, you're another one of those gluten-free people. Well, uh, here's your certificate that says, you know what, you've got a gluten sensitivity issue and you better do something about it because it's going to wind up causing disease down the road. And uh, what I find, Scott, is that at least 50% of the people that are patients of mine in my practice have evidence of leaky gut and gluten wheat sensitivity. It is a major, major problem uh, in society. And it stands to reason because wheat is just not paleo food, certainly not in its present condition, how most people eat it. So if you're like, oh, well, what about, you know, sprouted ancient grains? Well, yeah. I think those are probably a lot healthier, of course, than eating Wonder Bread. But here's the reality, man. Just just get tested. You know, don't, don't guess. Uh, yeah. Don't guess at it. It's you know, find out if it's cause, you know, whatever diet you're on, find out what it's doing to you. Don't say, Oh, well, you know what? I look good. I feel good. Everything's great. And you know, we all, we've all heard those stories where that person has a heart attack the next day. Uh, oh, can you believe that happened to so-and-so? Well, if they weren't tested, uh, uh, you know, you're never going to know. I've talked to some of the people, you know, some people, uh, that. Uh, are in the health and wellness space and you think they're the healthiest people in the world. And then they kind of call me up on the side and say, Hey, I'm having these kind of issues. And you're shocked. You're like, wow, you think they're so healthy. Uh, and then when you do the in-depth testing, you find all different areas of fault in those people. And then you work to correct it. That's all. Well, and I think part of this correction piece that our listeners need to get from you is that it this is correctable the human body is an amazing and powerful machine that's why i like to call it anyway so when you start fueling it with the right hydration the right nutrition the right light that you referenced earlier a uh, quick reference on that have you ever heard of the famous dr jack cruz uh i jack and i spoke together uh, uh, last, uh, June in, uh, at Shelburne farms in Vermont. Love Jack. I'm yep. jealous. I'm very jealous because he's been on the show. He is the most downloaded episode that I've ever had on this show. That guy has a crazy viral following Yes. and what he speaks to, to our listeners, for our newer listeners who have just been finding the show and haven't heard this before. Um, 
he talks about what uh, was it water light and magnetism and one of the reasons why jack moved him himself to louisiana for example was we were talking about this because when i was doing the wild and firefighting right our up in Pleasant Valley, the bottom of the valley in Arizona was 5,000 feet. The rim around us was 7,000 feet. And I, you know, because you've been to the Mogollon, all that stuff is higher. And he said, well, Scott, he said, and, and those two summers of wildland firefighting, I was in the outdoors all the time, in the sun all the time, at many times at fires anywhere from seven to 9,000 feet as well. And he said, Scott, he's like, what you don't realize is you were probably at the healthiest point in your life. Now, granted, I was taking on a lot of stress and t- uh, toxic inflammatory response mm-hmm. due to just the beat down that we did hiking in the mountains and wielding chainsaws and breathing smoke. So luckily I had the outdoors to balance some of that. And I did have to go through a little rebuilding after that because my body was pretty uh, built up with accumulated exhaustion, adrenal uh, weakness and stuff like that. But the point here is that he said, Scott, he's like, you were probably the healthiest you've ever been because of the, just that amount of light exposure uh, for your mitochondrial health, right? And you just talked about this, cellular repair, the mitochondria of our cells, the right amount of uh, being outside, getting out of the uh, unnatural lights. Uh, Jack was, uh, had no problem busting on me because uh, I'm a CrossFit coach in my free time. On Fridays, I, I coach cl- uh, classes in the evening. And he's like, he's like, I guarantee you guys are working out underneath those fluorescent lights, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. When spring and summer comes, I get him outside. He's like, get him outside in the middle of the snow. <laughs> So uh, well, I think I think what's you know what's great about Jack is that he brings some heavy science mm. to the paleo lifestyle is what it is, and you know Jack I think you know kind of gets away from the food issues and says well you know it's it's you know it's not uh, you know all those paleo gurus and paleo nutrition people you know they're missing the boat you know it's it's the paleo lifestyle living the lifestyle and in doing so you're eating the foods and Jack is a big fan of seafood of course and so am I and I test people's cellular level levels, uh, you know, of, of omega threes. And so many people, especially the vegan population, their cellular levels of omega three are in the toilet. And, uh, clearly that's linked to all disease. So, you know, Jack is about the basics, right? Get outside, get sunshine, get your sleep, uh, and eat your, uh, you know, eat tons of seafood and we'll live. And it's, uh, it's great to have someone like Jack on your side because he does delve so deep into the science, uh, and you're right, some of those rabid followers of his just dig up on that science too. But for the 99.99% of the population who doesn't want to do that kind of deep uh, quantum physics uh, dive, uh, just follow, you know, once, once again, just follow the wisdom of our ancestors, follow nature. You can learn about how the sun works and all the amazing things, or you can just say, you know what, I'm busy doing uh, other things in my life. I'm just going to make a focus on getting sunshine. Yeah. And, and, that, and I, you know, I talked before we started this call today about how I was at that event this weekend with uh, Joe Dispenza, who's a, a DC his, historically, but very well known in that quantum space, right? Talk about quantum law. And obviously he was more focused on brain health and our mindset and how we're driving positive versus negative thoughts. So he was at a different level of programming than what Doc, you know, Dr. Jack Cruz uh, hits on. But it's funny because one of my friends and followers has been loving the podcast now because we've brought on some more people like him and yourself. He's going to love this episode too. So shout out to Jason, but he just bought one of Dr. Jack, Jack, uh, Jack Cruz's new quantlets. So I can't wait for that thing to arrive because I'm going to go play with that thing because uh, I'm very intrigued by that. I don't know if you've dug into that more since uh, they released that new device. Uh, I ordered, and when I, uh, when I was with Jack, I ordered my uh, device shortly afterwards and I'm still waiting on delivery. So, okay. so uh, hopefully it shows up sooner than later and we can, uh, we can test it out. But the theory sounds great. And, you know, I guess one real quick thing is that a lot of these pl- people that are kind of cold, you know, gurus and big into the cold, I get it. But I'm a Chicago guy, uh, you know, and I moved to Arizona because I don't like the cold. So there may be some extraordinary health benefits to cold submersion and cold techniques. I just, uh, I don't think it's for me. Uh, (laughs) I'll I'll do everything else. But you know what? Our ancestors came from the Middle East. We came from Northern Africa. We were not cold, you know, exposed people. And maybe some degree of evolution has changed that or based on where you lived and who the survivors were. But you know what? I consider, my, consider myself a Middle Easterner at heart, although my family all came from Russia and Poland. But uh, I'll, I'll stick with the heat. Well, and, and all this we're discussing for our listeners, I mean, we're 
obviously talk about something that a lot of you guys don't know what we're talking about, this Quantlet device. You can Google it. Um, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes if you guys want to go check it out. But uh, some of you guys geek out like I do, and, and a lot of you guys don't. So, But the point here is to reel this back in here is that, and for our YouTube visitors, I still have the image up on the website here, the, the picture of the gut health. Reminder this is that, uh, I forget how many years ago it was, on Time Magazine, the cover of the magazine, there was a giant picture of fire. And the time was bringing light to the exposure of the, of, the, of the knowledge, the fact of the inflammatory response of our body, right? Inflammation killing America, I believe, was the, was the title of the article. And it was on the cover. And it was a powerful article. And I, I like to bring it up from time to time because this is everything that Jack is talking about. This is everything our Jack and the Pyro Jack is talking about. <laughs> I said, guys, like, your body is a powerful machine. If things aren't going right on the inside, the natural response is inflammation because literally our body is trying to put the fire out. Um, so are you okay with me explaining it in that way, in a very general way as a firefighter type terminology? <laughs> no, I, I, I totally agree, you know, but you know, once again, it's about, yeah, removing, you know, what's causing the fire. That's what's really the most important thing is that, uh, you know, it's all about causation and, and we can do it. So whether, you know, you put out the fire with natural approaches or you put it, you know, put it out with pharmaceutical or surgical approaches, it's about going after the causation. That's really what's, uh, what's, what's super important. Well, and, and back to the, your book, obviously the whole, the key word here is paleo, right? So, and actually, uh, on that paleo connection, I have never been to a paleo FX event, but I originally got connected to Jack Cruz because I had had one of his followers on Kevin Cottrell. And I believe you know him obviously, because you, have you been on Fitfluential radio? Uh, I have, I spoke at paleo effects last year, so okay. for, you know, 2016. Uh, but I, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with, with him. Yeah, Kevin Cottrell was actually one of the help guys who helped really create Paleo FX, and then he eventually split off because some of his knowledge that he's gained from Jack Cruz was creating, I guess, some rubs. And he's like, all right, well, it's fine. He's like, I'm going to go to the next level because even Jack said on my show, he's like, Scott, you mentioned biohacking and trying to get into the, you know, because I, I study a lot of this now, and, I, and I obviously I follow Dave Asprey, and I agree and disagree with some of the stuff he's doing. But the whole point here is we're trying to learn more, right, and dig into this more. And like I like the bulletproof methodology. I, I drink bulletproof coffee. I like that. Uh, and and do, you know removing the sugars and putting more healthy fats back Every, in my everyone diet. Everyone likes coffee, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> but the funny <laughs> thing here is that like Kevin Cottrell anyway came on my show, and then I found out about Fifth Lunch Radio. And the reason why I even got connected to Jack Cruz is because Jack shared that episode on all of his social media feeds. Mm -hmm. and my download spiked and all of a sudden a friend of mine texted me saying oh my god you're on jack cruz's feed and i'm like what are you talking about and i had no idea that kevin Cottrell was a follower of uh of jack cruz but they all talk about mitochondrial health getting more you know sunlight getting more of that healthy exposure uh but back to the paleo piece here is that again paleo is not just cutting wheat out of your life <laughs> to our listeners uh and if, i mean here in the u.s it is a big deal because we just i grew up in farming the wheat we had 25 plus years ago is not the same wheat or grains that we have today. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole bioengineering thing and all, all the uh, chemical crap, but, but basically that's really what it is. It's like it's, we've, we've bastardized our crops and it's not the same crops we had before. And I joked around about this this weekend at that dinner with Dr. Joe Dispenza. I said, you know, guys, you'll see me eat pasta when I go to Italy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I will probably yeah. try some pasta if I was in Italy because they have the original strain over there. If I go to Greece or something like that, I don't know if you would agree. Would you ever eat pasta over there? Well, you know, I mean, I, I definitely would, but uh, you know, I think once again, that's the importance of doing the testing is that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, see where you're at and may, maybe these grains are not bothering you uh, quite as much. And if you're feeling good and looking good and your tests come back and say that you're good, uh, then I think it's okay to, mm -hmm. to indulge in that a little bit. I mean, there's, there's absolutely no, no positive benefit whatsoever to eating sugar. So that's why I said, you know, originally everybody agrees with cutting that out. But if you're someone who's like, oh, you know what? I like Ezekiel bread. Or I'm going to Italy and I'm getting some fresh, uh, you know, uh, wheat that's, you know, that's, you know, ancient wheat, you know, ancient mm -hmm. grains and done in the right way without all the pesticides. Then, uh, then once again, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. But, um, you know, the problem, you know, and, and I mentioned this in the book is that it's, it's so much of it is all pesticide driven. So no matter what diet you're following, if you're vegan, if you're paleo, if you're Mediterranean, just do it without the chemicals. And that's going to make a huge, huge difference. And I think that, you know, where Jack Cruz and some of those other people, the bio, whatever, you know, what 
biohackers or whatever, uh, you know, people want to call themselves. I think that, you know, light and sunshine and all those things are important, but that's just not going to do enough to detoxify uh, the poison food. So yes. I think you have to rope back in that piece. And to me, it boils down to three things, uh, the right nutrition, the right sunshine, the right sleep. And you do that and everything else falls into place. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely square square up on that and actually agree because that was that was the firefighting thing. That's why I was beat up at the end of the year. It was just, we were sleeping every night, but we were doing 16-hour shifts on the fire line. But I think a big part of my issue, why I finished the season strong, but I wasn't at my normal fitness levels. It took me a month or two, and I still hadn't gotten all my energy back. And that's when I got into de uh, learning about detoxing. Uh, well, your body already detoxes, but most of us can't detox at the healthiest levels that we should be because we're so toxic. So things aren't cycling. That's why I got into some intermittent fasting, incorporating in that really helped body get back and jack up that detoxing process. Because as a firefighter, we were living on the government dime. So our fire camps were like, you know, low grade meat, low grade yeah. eggs. Uh, there was times where we're remote in the mountains. We're eating MREs. Dear God, that's gotta be the worst thing you could ever put in your body. Just yeah. ridiculous preservatives and salts. And it's just, Low, low quality. Just <laughs> and well, and I, and I think that's an issue I would take with, you know, with, uh, you know, paleo effects uh, and other events like that is that they just don't talk enough about the free range grass fed, you know, portion. And so many of these, you know, bone broth proteins and some of the stuff that's out there is, uh, you know, it's just not from the animal in the correct way. I mean, they're, they're getting these proteins, they're getting these powders uh, from tortured animals. And on the label, you know, no one, no one, you know, on the label, it'll say grass fed. What does that mean? You know, I'm looking for things that are 100% grass fed, you know, from start to finish. And it's about eating those healthy foods. And even some of those people in the paleo movement and that paleo effects, it also kind of morphed into, as you've seen, you know, paleo CrossFit and yeah, the people like, uh, you know, Jack and, and myself, Jack would, uh, you know, I, I think it's awesome if you can get outside and, and, you know, throw the boulder from here to there or carry jugs of water or carry other people. Or if you want to get into it, you know, fighting and wrestling, you know, with others, but it was all done outside. It wasn't done at, uh, you know, nine o'clock at night under the fluorescent bulbs i agree with that yeah it's it's i think i think if you had to uh, get go big picture on everything we're discussing it's just reminding every, all of us that it, yet the society has improved so much with technology but yet we've stepped away from some of the old school things so that's why i love the again the key word here is paleo but that paleolithic mindset is that we're not saying you go back to caveman times we're saying just look at some of the basic fundamentals that ensured survival and are we still, I guess, living with any of them <laughs> right. anymore? I mean, that's why it's like, guys, like it, we're not saying you have to go crazy obsessed like myself and you. <laughs> yep. uh, but then again, I have no complaints. I'm pretty happy and I'm pretty healthy. I'm turning 40 and I got people telling me that I don't look 40. I'm like, great. I appreciate that. Thank you. But that's the point here. We're talking about a healthy lifestyle. That's what we're doing with the show. Like, again, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle. But again, especially if you're some top-notch executive making great money, I, t I say this line all the time. I was like, listen, you can have millions of dollars, but when you hit 50, 60, or let's say even 70, and you're stuck in a hospital bed, what is that money worth? Like you can't spend it or you're, you're, you are going to spend, it. you're going to spend it on medical bills. But like, I would yep. rather be out in the mountains hiking and have the health and the fitness and the, the viral, the viral energy that everybody feeds off of around me. Like or I'm influencing other people. So that's why I get so passionate about this stuff. So, yeah. I mean, and listen, at the end of the day, it's all about giving people answers. You know, if you have health problems, uh, this is the way to live to get rid of those health problems. If you are looking to prevent disease, this is the way that, you know, that you do it. So we're giving people the answers and people are not getting the answers from their average MD. So, to, to tell people, hey, listen, uh, you know, if you take a statin drug, your chances of having a heart attack are 6%. If you don't take the statin drug, your chances are 7%. Uh, so if you want to be part of the 0% category that, uh, you know, Jack and Scott here are talking about, uh, you know, then, then th this is the way you're going to do it because we know what the numbers are in the medical system, 7% versus 6%. And I show all this data in my book, uh, uh, and if you're happy with that, fine. But if you want to be part of the 0% category, there is a way to do it. Well, and you, you had mentioned earlier, I'm going to rewind way back to the beginning of this episode. Uh, you had 300 different medical professionals, you know, obviously support your book. Was one of them Nina uh, Teicholtz? 
Well, when I when I say I've got three hundred references at the end okay, of my book, sorry, yeah. that yeah, that support you know my information. So this is just all the studies that you get from the medical literature. Uh, this is where I you know these these are references in my book. Um, so you know if I'm talking about paleo or I'm talking about pesticides or I'm talking about heavy metals or I'm talking about supplements, or I'm talking about stress and disease. I'm talking about lack of sleep and disease. I've got all the references in my book. So if someone was to come out and say, hey, listen, Wolfson's a crazy cardiologist. He met his chiropractic wife and went off the deep end. It's like, well, if you're insulting me, then you're insulting the 300 authors of the medical journals. So what your uh, point is, you're actually one of these valuable books that actually prove and, and have quoted legitimate research that actually is out there that I have a feeling that's why I'm, that's why I love books like yours. Uh, yours and I, I was hinting at Nina because Nina has that bestseller, The Big Fat Surprise which teaches us how to incorporate healthy fats back into our diet, very paleo-esque as far as meats and everything, butter. Uh, but the point here is that I love books like yours and hers, especially when you have tons of professional references down there because I think there's, there's so much incorrect professional information out there nowadays that they get lost. So it yep. takes professionals like you, Nina, and others to bring – the valid content back forth and you, you become basically a reference guide. It's like, Hey, it's not just Jack's opinion here. Like yeah. he, he's bringing in those resources. So you, you have basically a one-stop shop. Hey, here's everything. <laughs> well, you know, listen, if, if any of your listeners uh, have, you know, I'm fam you know, family members. So a lot of the people that are listening to this, I mean, they're all on board and they're all in agreement. They're like, yeah, I'm spot on. And maybe, you know, we've taught them a couple things about leaky gut or whatever, but this is about getting my book into the hands of anybody who has cardiovascular disease, who's looking to prevent cardiovascular disease. So we can show them that the pills and procedures model doesn't work. I've got the references and I've got the plan to make it work. And oh, by the way, take the book into your cardiologist or your MD's office and say, I'm following this guy and I've got the references in there to back it up. It's, you know, you're not listening to the cardiologist who said, go chew on the bark, uh, you know, of a saguaro cactus. I've got the science and the information in there and uh, it's really super simple. It's really exciting. Well, and something I promote on this show regularly is Audible. And I just brought this up for our YouTube watchers because, yes, it's available in audio content. That's what I own. I'm terrible at – I do have a lot of physical books that people send me, but I own the Audible version because I just travel so much. And this is just – that's this is what I promote. Like, guys, you don't have to physically sit down and read a book all the time. Get it an audio version and listen to it when you can fit it into your lifestyle. Uh, but to your point, though, Jack, yeah, get the physical because then you could drop it off at your doctor's office and maybe they'll actually have something intelligent on the uh, on the coffee table. <laughs> well, you know, and also, listen, I mean, there are yeah, certainly a lot of people we've done very well on audio book and stuff like that. But you know, for you know, for someone that you love to get the book into their hands, so you know, most I, I love reading physical books. I'm sure you do as well when you mm -hmm. have the time and late, you know, you know, at night before you go to bed, I, you know, I tell people obviously turn off the cell phone, the internet and the Wi-Fi and uh, unplug and then just turn on your, you know, your lamp with your incandescent bulb and, yep. uh, you know, and uh, uh, maybe your orange, uh, you know, uh, blue blocker glasses. Yeah. And just read a book and, and, and learn. But so many people in the generation of, of our parents, 60s, 70s, and even into their 80s, the book is such a valuable, valuable resource. And uh, heck, you know, Father's Day and whatever kind of holiday, don't buy people crappy, you know, sweaters and other kind of garbage that people buy buy give give the gift of health the gift of health and education actually yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I completely agree with that because we, we had this discussion actually this weekend uh, we were actually yesterday at my girlfriend's family's house and we were talking about sugar and stuff like that and they were joking around about how her mother can eat whatever she wants and I was like to be fair and obviously your test can confirm this but it's like guys like without me even having to bring this book out I can already say that from my research and what I've been studying I heard that there's basically, there's like, there's different opinions. Some say it's 20, some say it's 25, some, some say it's 30, but 20 to 30% of the population doesn't have issues with grains and sugars and stuff like that. But the best way to confirm it, going back to your earlier point here is getting tests like that done that actually confirm what is your gut biome? Like, how are you dialed and programmed? Because then we can have some science to actually back it up because I'd rather not just blindly be living and saying, hey, is this an issue or not? I know, I know that I don't have any 
leaky gut issues, but I still want to have the test done because I want to see, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but Well, I uh, mean, listen, you know, people are, un, uh, people are totally healthy until they wake up one day and they're not. I mean, uh, you know, once again, how many people, you know, how many times have we heard about, you know, someone in their 40s, you know, has, has breast cancer, 50s and the colon cancer and prostate cancer, or I've, obviously as a cardiologist, I've seen the sick as the sick. I've seen 20 year olds with, with massive heart attacks and sent, you know, sent them on to bypass surgery. Uh, you know, you see disease and unless you look under the covers, you're not going to see it. So yeah, even for you, Scott, or anybody else, uh, you know, you may have leaky gut and not have any symptoms whatsoever. You may have inflammation. You may have an HSCRP that's elevated, phospholipase A2, myeloperoxidase, uh, oxidized LDLs. You don't know until you get tested. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. And sometimes testing can be very motivational, right? You see, you've got leaky gut and you're like, oh, okay, now I've got to really avoid, uh, I've got to avoid the grain or I've got to do the things to help heal it. If you want health, if you just want the information or you see the information and you don't make any life changes, well, that's, that's kind of up to you. I mean, addictions, uh, from food are, are in lifestyle, you know, choices are, uh, it's tough. It's, it's really tough. You know, and I'm going to, I'll get a little selfish here, but so it's the selfishness will be for the listeners benefit too. So on your point here, I'll make a two part question. Like one, would you say out of all the different blood tests we can get this, this is obviously probably one of the priorities you probably want to start with because some of these medical tests do add up. Some are cheap. So I've heard about hundred dollars, 200, $300. So it's like, guys, like you got to have a starting point and there's so many tests that are being recommended or not recommended out there. Like obviously it's on your site. So you recommend it, but yep. in a, in a purest of messaging, would you say that this is one of the first ones you should really be, ever consider getting done? You know, I've been doing it for, for over a year now, and I w would definitely say yes, because once again, this appears to be kind of the starting point. Uh, why do I care what your, you know, LDL is, your HDL is? Why do I care, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, about the, the old time cholesterol markers when I want to figure out why things may be abnormal. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the source, you know, and, you know, so you're looking at the leaky gut. Uh, and if you have evidence of that, then we got to figure out why. If you don't have leaky gut and you have low inflammation, uh, you're probably in a pretty good place. I mean, you're, you're on the right path. Now, that isn't to say, well, if you're eating junk food going forward that you're not going to develop it because, listen, you know, uh, people smoke for 40 years and then they get cancer. How'd that happen? I've been smoking for 40 years and now I've got cancer. That's not possible. You know, your body eventually starts to give out. So, you know, you may not have leaky gut five years ago, but you could have it today while maintaining the exact same, same lifestyle. Well, and there's people who say, well, I have no history of heart disease or cancer in my family. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. And then boom, they have cancer. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's your body. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice to not have a family history, but, uh, uh, you know, that being said, even with family history, something has to trigger those genes. We are not genetically designed to have cancer or heart disease or anything else. Uh, you know, we're, we're genetically programmed to be pretty darn fantastic. Uh, and it only, you know, and that's the whole concept of the epigenetics. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, I think it's important to get, get, you know, to get tested and see where you're at and, and go from there. Because once again, I've just, I've, I've been doing this for so many years. <laughs> I've seen nasty, nasty things happen. And when so-and-so was, was healthy, supposedly, I just wish I had the chance to check them beforehand and say, wow, your body is absolutely on fire. I'm glad you're not having symptoms from it because a lot of people don't. A lot of people have, have celiac antibodies, uh, have no symptoms gastrointestinal wise, but they have brain fog and they have brain issues and that's clearly linked to uh, autoimmune gut disease oh yeah the autoimmune thing is a whole different that's a whole different show i mean I, I lost a cousin to als so it's uh it's not it's not a fun illness or disease and if if it could be improved a little bit i mean that goes back to we mentioned dr perlmutter for example and all his studies about cutting grain and increasing healthy vegetable and healthy uh, fat content back into the diet and he's seeing improved whether he's dealing with clients or, or uh, test patients regarding depression or other illnesses, it's like, it's crazy to see this. But again, testing helps fortify that. So let's right. say, and, let's and, say, and, and I'm sorry, and real, real quick, yeah. ALS, ALS is linked to leaky gut. It's, it's in the literature. Okay. okay. 
powerful. It's, it's in the literature. I mean, once again, the literature is not everything. I mean, some things just make common sense. But at the end, uh, it is nice to have uh, some of that, you know, some of that reinforcement in the literature to prove, you know, exactly. Yeah, no, there's a link. And over the next 10 years, the literature uh, will explode on that. And Perlmutter's book and, and Bill Davis, uh, you know, my only, and I don't know where Bill Davis is now. You know, he became famous because of Track Your Plaque. Mm -hmm. And track your plaque was about getting routine CT scans to determine if you have coronary artery disease. In my book, I totally bash that whole thing. Uh, I hate uh, CAT scans. If you you know fall off a cliff and you smash your skull and you need a CT scan, different story. But CT scans cause heart disease. CT scans cause uh, cancer. So yeah, not, don't be not, increasing not scans in your life. You'll, yeah, one, no, one no, once in a no, while, no. understandable, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, listen, I operate under the assumption everybody's got coronary artery disease. Let's look at the lab test and see how we can prevent it. I don't need a CAT scan in anybody ever uh, to tell me whether or not they have disease. I think it's a horrible idea. Yeah. Well, and let's, let's say myself or somebody else gets these tests finally done. And obviously, every person's different. Every lifestyle is different. Every you know, history, family history, genetics, et cetera. Even though I do believe we can reprogram our genetics, uh, that's a whole different discussion. But what are some of the basics? You get the testing back. There's obviously some concerns with some of the gut health, right? What are some of the basic things? I mean, besides obviously, we can answer that with paleo. But what are some of the, like top three things that you see most people? making the initial changes with like action steps, even if they haven't even that done this blood test yet. Well, you obviously just, you want, you know, just live in the paleo lifestyle. So it's the nutrition, it's the sleep, it's the sunshine. Uh, it is, we talked about stress. Stress is in and of itself is linked to a leaky gut. Now there, those studies are done on mice. And when you put mice under a stressful situation, they will develop leaky gut and all the same things that humans uh, will have. So that's in the literature and uh, alcohol and a leaky gut uh, is is confirmed on and on. So just by cleaning up that lifestyle, you'll do it. There are evidence-based supplements. I am a supplements guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people, you know, in the world who uh, who will condemn or bash supplements. But you know what? I've just I've been in the field for too long. I've been in the trenches, and I think uh, we can take that. Uh, take that, I don't know, you know, that certain path of, of bashing the, the supplements, but the reality is they, they work. And so many people on quote unquote, the best diets have deficiencies. We test for them, we oh, correct God, yeah. them and, and things improve. I mean, so vegan and vegetarians, for example, suffer from a lack of B12. I mean, uh, especially if you're a vegan, like you, you, B12, omega threes, different amino acids, yeah. magnesium. Uh, We're all deficient yeah. in magnesium. Yes. Yeah. No, the, uh, the, the vegan topic is a topic for, I guess, for another That's day. That's another and, show. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, and, and let me say this, you know, and, and uh, you know, our buddy Jack Cruz is a big fan of eating shellfish and, and particular oysters. Mm -hmm. Why can't a vegan eat an oyster? I mean, like, why does an oyster have any more or less feelings than a head of cabbage? Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, if you're a vegan, please, please, please eat, eat, uh, eat oysters. Yeah, I, I, just, I agree. It's, it's a shellfish. It, or not even a shellfish, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's con yeah, I I guess you can probably break it down into some kind of collegiate level course and anatomically <laughs> and uh, phylogenetically what an oyster is, but uh, uh, I just know they're healthy and I tell people to eat them. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been an amazing episode. I'm so glad we finally got a chance to get on. You and I had a little bit of a scheduling issue for about a week or two, but this is the kind of powerful content that I'm trying to get out there with this show is like, this is what our listeners need to be hearing, guys. Like, whether you're a business professional, whether you're a yoga instructor, whether you're, you know, I don't care, one of our va valuable garbage collectors that cleans up our messes behind us. Like everybody needs to be living a healthier lifestyle so you can enjoy life more. Um, so Jack, this has been a great episode. I, I, if in the future you want to definitely come back on, you have another message you want to get out there, you are more than welcome to return as a co-host. Uh, but we had hinted about earlier in this episode that I always like to end the show with you giving us your final words or messaging, there's already been so much messaging today, but what's something that if everybody forgets everything else you had on the show, these are your final words for today that we can really stand the test of time with. Well, you know, I guess what I would say is, is that, um, you know, I've been on CNN before and I've been on, uh, you know, NBC and interviewed for the Washington post and all these different places. I, I talk the talk and I walk the walk and I want everyone also to get that message that, you know, you, 
under, you, you know, you know the right way to do it. You go ahead and do it and you teach others how to do it. Do not be afraid to speak your truth because so many people are, they're afraid of offending people about, uh, you know, you know, with, with their message. Do not be afraid because you're going to save someone's life. This is how we're going to change the world and make it a healthier place by people yelling and screaming from the rooftops uh, about the truth. And when you see someone smoking or you see someone who smells of dryer sheets and fabric softeners, uh, or you see someone injecting, you know, poisons in, into their body, uh, uh, eating tortured animal products, on and on and on. Educate, educate, teach, 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 because you know, you're going to piss some people off, but you're going to open up the eyes of so many. So continue to speak the truth. That's great messaging. Hang on a line. I want to make sure I give you a proper goodbye when I finish up here. So again, to our listeners, guys, Speak the truth. Don't be afraid. Jack said it best. So this is what we're all about, guys. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. Dr. Jack has rocked the mic today with us, so please be sure to get back to, go, again, all the show notes are on the website. Get to their website. Go to Dr. Wolfson's, sorry, the, the doctorswolfson.com and get fueled up, all right? There's a lot of knowledge out there. Get the book, okay? Paleo Cardiologist. Let's talk to you guys again soon. Keep living the fired up epic life. Later, guys. All right, sir. Podcast is clear. I leave a, I leave a video run until we say, we say goodbye. So <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. I hope stuff. you had fun today. Fun. No, definitely, definitely, definitely. Obviously, you can tell I'm pretty passionate about these conversations. So you could uh, probably see okay. the same thing for me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No That's doubt. this is what I this is this is what I want the listeners to get. Like if they. Because live the fuel is not going anywhere, man. We're going to keep growing. And that's what it's all about, right? It's living the fired up epic life, okay? I need people that get fired up about their messaging because that's how we're going to get through to people. If people hear passion, they know we're not full of shit, okay? Like yep. there's seriously something behind that messaging. So, and again, to your point at the end of the show here, we may not get through to everybody, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a percentage. Little by little, we start chipping away and we could be teaching and educating more people and then they in turn can teach and educate more people. And that's the kind of virus that I want to see being spread around yeah. this country and around the world. Well, and that's, you know, and once again, I mean, that's why, you know, it's, it sounds kind of self-promotional, you know, where you're talking, where I'm like, hey, listen, buy the book, you know, for your loved ones. And of course, I'd love if we sell another million copies, you know, for people giving it to their father and their aunt and their uncle or whatever. But, uh, you know, and that's, that's, you know, the beauty, I think, of my position that coming from a, a cardiologist who is trained one way and then learn the other, and then to be able to put together that resource, it's just, um, I, I think it's great. And I think the revolution is on. I mean, the the pharmaceutical industry, you know, these people, they're just, they're dead in the water. So. Yeah. I mean, um, eventually the money will run out. I mean, I would like to say yeah. that, but I mean, eventually education trumps uh, money at some point. And actually with your, with your goals, I will tell you, I forgot to mention on the show, uh, you should definitely check out one of Vinny's co-hosts. She's a regular. Her name is Anna Vocino, crazy obsessed about cooking healthy. Mm -hmm. She released a book last year. I've been promoting the heck out of it. It's called the eat happy cookbook. Mm -hmm. You should check it out. It is all about NSNG, no sugars, no grains, very yeah. paleo. Wow. I, I love her cookbook. It is absolutely amazing. And it's like your book. I literally bought like five copies, <laughs> gave it to all of my family. I said, listen, guys, oh, thank you. I'm tired of telling you how to cook or how to live. Mm -hmm. Just look at this type of thing, yeah. right? Same thing with your yeah. book. It's like, guys, just crack open a couple chapters once in a while and, and page right. through it. So, and, and, you know, and people said, you know, well, you know, when is your cookbook coming out? It's like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not creating a cookbook. Uh, to me, you know, to me to keep it super simple, it's kind of like that, you know, like the camping foods thing, right? You just get a, you know, big piece of salmon and throw it on the grill yeah. and throw some seasoning and spices on there and you're good to go. But, um, but to your point earlier, it's like, Hey, sometimes you need that visual representation, like the television behind you. So it's like, all right, well, fine. Here yeah. guys, here's a beautiful cookbook that I got yeah. on Amazon for you. If you want to, if she's got it in digital version too, but I'm no, like, check it out. Yeah. yeah I was like, dude, her always asking me for cookbooks and you know, sharing that stuff on social media. Love it. So yeah, um, I gotta say some of the cleanest recipes I've seen in a while. So I know you'd probably be pretty, I mean, she, she, she did say, she's like, listen, unfortunately it's a cookbook. So I had to put a couple of dessert recipes in there because people it. expect that. But I that's the, it. that's the only recipes I've seen in her cookbook that have sugar in them. So, mm -hmm. uh, really impressive. 
during that whole conversation, we didn't touch on uh, on vaccinations and the whole vaccine system. So, if you ever want, oh, to, uh, that's a good episode. Go into, if you ever want to go into that deep dive, let me know, and uh, I can bring uh, I can bring Dr. Heather on. You can interview the both of us. And, yeah, uh, Zoom um, supports multiple people. That would yeah. be awesome because I don't get vaccines, so yeah. I don't get the flu shot. I am a yeah. big supporter of that, and that is. See, that's good content too for you guys because when that goes up online, that's that yeah. kind of viral SEO content stuff that's going to drive traffic back to your site too yeah. because more people like us are getting the word out about that. Yeah. So. Um, uh, you, got an, you got another minute? Yeah. All right. Go, um, go to a website called uh, vaccineimpact.com. Well, you and I, you got, we're not sharing anymore. So, okay. well, this is all being live for YouTube. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this, I, I always, I give a little extra. It's like when you release a physical book, if you read your, if you end up doing your own audio book, usually the author ends up throwing in extra stories just because it's mm. their book. That's why I love it yeah. when an author does their own, but yeah. same, thing with, it's, yeah. same thing with podcasting. I'm like, great. I'll give a little extra something, something in the YouTube. So I, I didn't, and I should have, that was a major mistake, but just like anybody with time or whatever. So yeah. on vaccine impact, there we go. Uh, there may be a search button in there. And if you punch up my name, so how I wound up on CNN, it was, you know, I will I, share this back to the YouTube people. There we go. Yeah, so I don't know if there's a search button on there here. Is. Yeah, there's a search button. And then punch in Jack Wolfson. Let's see what comes in. And actually, I can, I, you know, I can put this in the show notes either way. So that's fine. I can hyperlink okay, so, this into so, the show so, notes. All right, so go to that top one there, that top listing. I'm going to take note on my board here. All Critic, right. Critics regarding measles and vaccines. Take a look at the Facebook shares on this post. 508,000. <laughs> okay, clearly this is a, well, see, that's the beauty of content like this. People who don't like your message are going to share it. And people that do like your message are going to share it. I would like so, to say that most of those are the positive ones, but. Uh, you know, I can tell you crazy stories about negativity and about phone calls and emails and death threats and all kind of stuff that we got. It was pretty crazy time, uh, a little over a couple of years ago, but, uh, you know, you as a, you know, in a marketing background and things like that to see this particular page. And, you know, when, when you're offline, you have a chance to read this. It's just a, it's like a 500 word blog post. Uh, well, you you got 189,000 likes, let alone yeah. the 500 and over a half a million shares. So this is the post that, you know, that got me onto CNN. And then the next night they wanted to interview me on Fox. And, uh, you know, what I thought was going to be fair and balanced, I quickly realized that mainstream media does not want nope, to hear they twist it. health and wellness. Uh, and, uh, and I backed out of the Fox. I was on CNN, but I backed out of the Fox, uh, you know, episode. But uh, They're always going to twist it because yeah. they, have the, they have the rights to the content. You're... Uh, it's, it's, that's, that's why I don't watch the news. I can't stand yeah. it. That's why I, that's why I listen to podcasts. <laughs> I, I guess, you know, obviously, and if, we're, if you're kind of worried about your listeners and offending people, that's up to you. But nope. it's, all, it's all about education. And I can speak to myself as a medical doctor going through all my training. We didn't question vaccines. We didn't question the diseases. It was just you just gave, you know, children their shots and, and move along. And, um, uh, you know, so opening up my eyes and opening up everybody's eyes is like, hey, listen, you know what? Uh, uh, this is just another scenario to uh, learn the truth and then decide where you want to go. If you want to vaccinate, that's up to you. Uh, my, my preference is that you don't inject kids with chemicals to fight hepatitis B, uh, supposedly, uh, that there's a better way. Well, I completely agree with you on that. So I, uh, I'm actually good. I never even know about this article. So I have to go back now. I'm going to read this article too. So, but I'm going to link that in the show notes, but then that could be our tag for a return episode. We'll get both of you on. And that's going to be a powerful episode because that's just going to drive more people back to you, especially if this has already got exposure. It's yeah. all going to, it'll all connect the dots in the Google world. Yeah. And just give you more uh, spike. And 
all you need is a percentage of positivity out of that type of episode. And that's just going to drive more people to get more of your books and get more educated. And that's now, the whole I mean, point. We're, we're on cutting edge and we're obviously pissing off a lot of people. And obviously uh, all my cardiology buddies are gone. All my old friends, they're all gone. But, uh, you know, I think sometimes you get in this space and it's guys like, you know, me and you and Vinny and, and yeah. Jack Cruz. And it's, it tends to be very male dominated. So to have Dr. Heather on here as well is like this strong female voice of like totally in your face. Yes. It's so empowering to the women to to get that message uh as well so it's oh cool. yeah i'm in i'm in well for virtual messaging world with nina nina ty Colts right now or ty schultz ty Colts, whoever yep. because her book has been viral and she's involved with that whole case down in south africa right now with um well, you know about that that one doctor he's they're trying to take his license away mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what's his name are you following that at all? Uh, I'm, I'm not at all, but uh, I mean, it's, listen. If, you know, it's, if, it's another doctor who basically pushes healthy fats and yeah. some, some woman in South Africa tweeted him saying, hey, I, you know, I have a new baby. What do you think about you know, ketogenic or you know, higher fat lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. And he told her that and then basically supported it. And then somebody re reported him to the whatever their world is for the health mm -hmm. department over there. And now they're trying to take him to court saying that he's basically breaking the laws of health or something like that. I don't know. It's a whole thing. Well, you know, I mean, you know, once you get that license, you know, you're uh, an MD or a DO, uh, you do have to be, you know, very careful, obviously, about practicing medicine across state lines, practicing medicine without a license, practicing medicine on people, you know, that are not your patients. And where does, you know, that line cross between freedom of speech uh, and actually providing medical advice? It's, yeah. uh, it's oh, it's, 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 it's the Tim Noakes trial. If you've yeah. ever heard of Tim Noakes, he's on trial right now, or he was. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, but listen, you know what? The, you know, the truth has to come out. We can, as we said before, you can't hide. Uh, you got to speak the truth, and you know, with the internet, you know, it's it, it's it's very difficult to filter that message for us. Who's patients, who's not patients. But, uh, you know, to me, it's a freedom of speech issue. You listen to me, you listen to this person, uh, you decide you make the best choice for you and your family. That's the point of everything we're trying to do. We're not, Hey, listen, we could, we're telling you what we do and we're telling you what we think you should do. But in the end, it's, you are an individual human being. You have to make your own decisions. So you can't blame anybody else for your decisions but yourself. People need to start taking more accountability and stop passing the buck and blaming people. It's like, it's your health, man. You either want to fix it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and especially, you know, for the children, I mean, it's just, uh, and that's what I'm, you know, I left a very, very, very lucrative cardiology job, uh, you know, uh, just as you've done in the past, you know, leaving, uh, you know, leaving, uh, you corporate know, world, corporate yeah. world, yeah, corporate work. And, you know, to do so, you're giving up a lot of that financial security because that's the money train. I mean, the money train in the medical insurance industry, it's like every month I'm getting this massive paycheck without having any stress whatsoever to worry about it and to to leave that all behind in 2012 and to do the right thing but i always said to myself at the end of the day how do i want my children to look at me when i'm on you know the the whole story when you're on your deathbed you know and you're looking back on your life and your children are and your family are surrounding you your loved ones are surrounding you how do you want to be remembered you want to oh well you know i worked as hard as i could to make as much money as i could to buy you enough toys uh or no i was out there in the world making a difference i was yeah. really fighting are you really providing true health care right yeah. real actual health care so yep and that's what, uh, that's why I'm loving this because you're not the only one. I've, I'm slowly hearing it more and more. Like there's professionals who are just being pushed to the breaking point, And then eventually they got to dig deep inside themselves and say, Hey man, where's my energy really aligned right now? And it, it, literally they're slowly dying in the inside and you oh, probably were too. It's, it's terrible. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can almost feel bad for those people. I did a, uh, I did a blog post a while ago, you know, on why I feel bad for medical doctors, but you're right. You know, you look at things like vaccines revealed right now, the truth about vaccines is going on and these are all MDs and DOs and PhDs that are being interviewed. It's not like there's one and two, you know, uh, you know, crazy people out there saying the earth is flat. Nope. Um, you know, there are, you know, some seriously intelligent medical doctors that are questioning the entire uh, vaccine system and obviously the statin drugs. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not the only person out there and I'm certainly not the first one and I'm not going to be the last one. Yeah.
No, this has been amazing. And I'm glad. I'm thank you. And I, I, I'll personally just thank you for my audience and just say, listen, thank you for making that massive decision in 2012 because you're just being added to the list of other professionals. And I'm just hoping that we make a big enough impact in my lifetime and your lifetime to see a massive shift and hundreds of thousands of professionals finally start falling in the line and questioning our debunked system here because that's, that's all we can hope for. So. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, real quick, I mean, I think it is, you know, compared to how it was, you know, 15, 20 years ago, there were, you know, a few, you know, uh, you know, docs that would have been called like, you know, crazy oddball kooks. And, and I think also, you know, myself, you know, coming from the position as a cardiologist, I think I speak pretty well. I think I dress the role, you know, I'm not just some, you know, granola, uh, you know, not to insult people, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think that I come from a position of authority and knowledge and can speak the truth that I think once again, you know, you know, people like myself or, you know, Jack Cruz, I mean, when you hear this stuff, you know, from a neurosurgeon, right, there's no one higher up in the pecking order of, of medical doctors than a neurosurgeon. And when you can trot out, you know, uh, Jack Cruz or David Perlmutter and yep. Bill Davis and and myself and so many others uh, that uh, yeah people have to they have to pay attention they will sooner or later I mean yeah. that's all we're doing we're we're putting in the reps <laughs> you got it you got it well, well, this Scott, has been amazing so you, did you um if you have professional headshots or whatever uh, to use for the show notes content for the website email yep. those back to me because I, I like to use what you guys approve and prefer because yep. okay. then I'm, I'm ensuring your consistency on branding. So I yep. um, want to respect all that. So, and then you if there's it. any I'll, other I'll links that you feel are crucial that we failed to bring up or whatever, throw them into the email because I'll, I'll just hyperlink everything into the content. So mm -hmm. I, I try and over deliver. <laughs> Good. No, so. no, no. Excellent. Excellent. And then I'll be, uh, once again, I'll be happy to share that with everybody too. And I'll put that into our newsletter and, yeah, uh, I think we're about, that. we're two weeks out right now, according to my schedule. So I'm, I try and stay less than a month because I, and if there's, that's why I always ask people, like if there was something crucial that happened during the episode, like a book launch or something like that, then I'll usually will try and flip flop the order and get somebody moved up sooner if they've got a launch. Cause I try and time all that nicely. So, right. And even when I mentioned father's day, I was kind of like reluctant. I'm like, oh, I don't know when this thing's going to air, you know, uh, you know, so you always, you're trying to be careful about, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, mentioning specific dates and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, we, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, about 25,000 email addresses and 34,000 on, on Facebook. So Good job. We'll, we'll definitely promote it out there. So but I'll, I'll tell you one more thing. Cause you're a marketing guy. Um, I didn't have much to capitalize on as far as a website and stuff like that. So when all this went down in January of 2015, I, I didn't, I didn't have the book. I had nothing ready to go. Uh, but our Facebook page went from 4,000 to 24,000 overnight. Wow. Overnight. It was <laughs> crazy. Well, and to be I fair, had, a lot of people just use a Facebook page until they have a website. The whole point here is you at least took the step to exist. I t yeah. That's why I tell people like my clients, my guys, like my tagline for my, my marketing business is control how you exist. You need to, mm -hmm. you got to exist so people can at least try and like you or follow you. So yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's powerful. All right, Scott. Well, thank you, sir. And then yeah, check with Heather. See, and obviously you know how to p plug into my calendar and we'll get you, get you back on because that's going to be a powerful episode because I would love to geek out on vaccines. So uh, yeah, we're actually, we're speaking at Autism One, uh, where the keynote speaker is the end of May. Uh, I'll be speaking at an autism event uh, in Vermont, uh, May 20th. And I'm hearing from the organizers of that, that uh, uh, they're getting so much protest that they've been talking to the police <laughs> and about protection. And there's going to be protesters at the event. Uh, oh and God. it's an autism event. It just happens to have some pretty prominent anti-vax people. Uh, uh, Andrew Wakefield's going to be there. Del Bigtree, who's the, who was the producer of the movie Vaxxed, uh, my friend who's a, uh, who's a DO, fellow DO, Sherry Tenpenny, she's going to be there. So wow. it's billed as an autism event, but there's definitely some strong anti-vaxxers. But I'm going to be trotting out that leaky gut uh, uh, literature and the PowerPoint presentation on the leaky gut and saying, uh, you know, the, the vaccines are, are part of it, but it's also the environmental pollutants that are destroying the gut. And leaky gut is leaky brain, is leaky heart. And uh, herein lies the problem, so. Well, I wish you luck at those events, sir. So <laughs> and, uh, are you going to have them on your calendar on the website and stuff? Because, I mean, I'm going to – I got to try uh, and find one here on the East Coast that I can get into my schedule and go visit, so. 
Yeah, well, well, the one for uh, you know May twentieth uh, in, in Vermont. Uh, that's, uh, that's going to be a good one. That's, that's an all day Saturday event. And remind me, where are you based out of? Pennsylvania. Yeah. That's who you home. Uh, and we're in Pennsylvania. Allentown, about an hour North of Philadelphia. <laughs> My father went to Muhlenberg. Uh, literally. Uh, so Dr. Megan Cannon, the PhD sports psychologist that we aired this morning, she's here with a very viral company online for psychology called mind of the athlete. Uh, mm-hmm. but they travel all around, but she just took on a sports psychology position as well at Muhlenberg wow. in January because they didn't have anybody to teach that course for a couple of years now. Yeah. And they approached yeah. her saying, Hey, we know you work for mind of the athlete, but could you also help us? So it's just, there's a funny little small circle there. I, um, yeah. And my father was originally, he was born and raised in Atlantic city, New Jersey, and then, uh, you know, living in Chicago and I wound up going to, to uh, university of Illinois for undergrad. Um, but, uh, he would have loved for me to have gone, gone to Muhlenberg. And I think in <laughs> retrospect, I mean, I, I, can't, I, I haven't been there. I can't say much about it, but there's gotta be something uh, different, obviously about the, about the liberal arts, small college, uh, uh, you know, I, maturation process because you know, University of Illinois to me was just one big party with uh, you know biology and science classes that had you know three seven hundred thousand people wow. uh, in there. It was just it was just pandemonium, and uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Allentown for you. <laughs> Small world, I love it. All right, well, if you can sneak up to Vermont, uh, uh, you know, let me know. Is that on your site? The, nah, the it's not on the site. I, I think I have it up on the. I have it up on our Facebook pages in the events area. Facebook event. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, um, and then if you're interested, I can get you more information or you know email. Yeah. You stuff. Send it over. I I have no idea. I got to go look at my calendar. What May looks like, but um, yeah, I'm trying to do more events this year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. And, and, and Paleo Effects is certainly good. You know, Paleo Effects, they wanted me to speak again, but they couldn't confirm to get me on a Friday. So I'm, yeah. I'm not Perlmutter yet. Uh, <laughs> not like that kind of, you know, Uber we all start somewhere person. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> so they wouldn't commit to getting me on Friday because I was committed to speak on Saturday for, for the autism event. Uh, and they're like, well, sorry, we can't give you that. Well, well if you can't commit that, I, I mean, I need to, I, I like my schedule well in advance. Yeah those types so anywho all right dude good talking to you all right sir enjoy the day keep up the good work yeah you too you too Scott. thank you